it dead this time? Oh my god, you guys look at this. Oh, I really wanted to quote our favorite line from Return of the Living Dead just then. So, you guys know what this means, right? That, no. Guys? Don't even say it. This How? is How? a I'm zombie! Serious. He said it. Fucking zombie! Saying it doesn't make it real. Not saying it doesn't make it less real. Guys! We have worse problems. What's worse than a zombie? Several of them. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Two Guys and Some Horror. My name is Princess Clark, and today I'm joined with my ever uh, so wonderful partner in crime, uh, Queen Curtis. Curtis, how you doing today? I'm doing good, dude. Um, don't know why I'm being called Queen, but I'll take it. That's a high honor. Is, are you are you uncomfortable with that? No, no, I'm very it, comfortable uh, with it. Give okay. it to me, baby. Well, I'm just checking uh -huh, you because know, uh -huh. <laughs> give it to me, baby. All right, I love it. I love, I love the energy. Uh, today, my friend, we are discussing a movie that I don't think you enjoyed. This may be one of the the few movies that you may not have enjoyed. We'll uh, we watched Bong of the Living Dead, which uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure not many people who are listening to this have seen it. Eh, you're, you're free to watch it. I don't think we're, we're going to spoil much in terms of anything. I don't think this movie is spoilable. Uh, there are many twists. There are many turns. So a lot of them make no sense whatsoever. A uh, few fun fun jokes here and there you can tell they had fun with the script they tried to have fun making this movie but uh yeah curtis you and i were just talking about this too like how this movie was made mm -hmm. um we're talking about okay and and this film was an indiegogo campaign it was and they they raised yeah uh, so so basically I did raise some money. I did a, a very minute amount of of looking up just to kind of figure out what this movie was about because um obviously watching it you get right. anyone can go out and shoot a film these days as long as you have the the passion, the uh creativity to to go make something, you know, the will and I think one thing that we'll talk about a little bit as well um that you mentioned before which is like the support, someone helping supports you and, and telling you yeah keep going man like you're doing good keep going um and i think that's like that's a huge factor when it comes to being creative and, and coming up with something so um the fact that it is an indiegogo project doesn't like bother me i i love that idea that we can go out and pitch an idea and somebody could donate money to you or me and we could create something that we want to create right that's amazing so this is a this is a passion project this uh i don't know how long it took to write the script i don't know like most of these actors are not big names some of them have been in tv some of them have been in commercials i i don't want to poo poo on on the acting or or the direction or anything like that but this is definitely uh has the feeling of being a film created by a community college student a bunch of community college students trying to do you know get into their first foray very uh and i don't want to use the word amateur but you know it, it's like the camera the the angles the transitions those are done well uh, uh the acting's not great it's a little hammy at times a little kind of cringe i would say the main character is absolutely cringe but you know who do you consider the main character <sighs> the guy who stays at the end in the the flyer jacket. Yeah, I don't remember his name. So Was that's that's our yeah, that's our favorite uh our our lovable know it all when it comes to zombies and how to handle it, Hal Rockwood. Rockwood, yeah. He uh I felt like they put the most emphasis on him as a character. They tried to make everyone seem like they had a big big part in terms of like the five uh, well, six of them, I guess, if you count the the small blonde girl. Um, but <clears throat> you see a lot of tits, just come, you know, standard. It's a 
it's a zombie film and I what like your, that. Whoa, I whoa, know, whoa. Man. What's your definition of a lot of tits? Because you get two pairs of tits in this movie. That's it. That's you all get we get. You get two pairs right two, up back two to back. You get to see the small blonde girl's tits, and then uh-huh. you get to see the, the girl in the truck's tits. And it's like yeah. back to back. So, like, and I was just like, wow, there are lots of tits. And then you see That's all before the small the blonde screen. girls quite a few. <laughs> you see hers quite a few times. Yeah, well, it takes 20 minutes to get to that title screen, yeah. and uh, which is a long time. That's a long time for a screen crawl, especially with that slow, slow build up to get to the zombies. Um, I really enjoyed the title. I guess they were the... trying to go for. For what? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I really enjoyed I, that I too. title. I, scroll I thought this was like that crawl. 70 show. Nice. Oh, yeah. It was. It was great. The uh, They did most of the credits at the very beginning, which was cool of them, and they just showed the zombies kind of come out, and I was like, wow, this is this is going to be great. I, I'm, here, I'm here. I'm sold. I'm in. First 20 minutes kind of set the tone, and then it's it's okay. After that, it's okay. I feel like there's the, the weird shit with the twins, the stoner twins. One of them's like saying a bunch of voodoo crap, right? Yeah, she's spouting she's a bunch saying, of like, the, different scripture or um, <laughs> like literature. She's like, it's very weird. But she like gives some prediction, like the drug that you do, like marijuana, will prevent you from getting becoming a zombie or something like that. And I was like, is that why this film is called Bong of the Living Dead? Is there an actual point to the name other than the fact that all six of these characters just really like getting high? Yeah, I mean the. Uh, they end up using that as a tool later on at the end of the film, right? For our climax. Yeah, well, the, the baseball bat, but they've been using it at the very beginning. I'm no, I'm talking about like, the giant leaf blower of marijuana is oh. how they actually escape, right? So, like, it, right. in a way, she's foreshadowing, um, you know, what they're going to do, the, the, the way that they're actually going to get away from um the zombies at the end of the movie whether they even thought that far ahead or realistically put those two pieces together and did it on purpose no idea because that whole scene is so that whole scene is crazy i don't know it's a giant bong Leaf is not a bong (laughs) that's not how a bong works that's not a bong curtis did you see it get built smoke blowing device yes and then was there water the water yes the the actual bong apparatus on the back is it's what? an actual bong. Curtis knows more I, about weed than I do. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Just kidding. I'm joking know. with you. Uh, no, no, no. So this, this film's absolutely, like you're saying, man, like I, there's, well, the, the baseball bat was also, a, was it a pipe, I guess? But mm-hmm. yeah. No. Which I thought was cool. I get like, it. It makes sense. Especially because they tie in so much from when they were younger kids. The whole opening, like the first five minutes of this movie is just, is them telling a story about when they were younger sneaking into you know old man whatever it's a sandlot skit basically where they get you know, the, well, the first five minutes yeah and they get the bat uh-huh so they're all you know the whole Dude, story that... is about getting that bat and then it cuts to them smoking weed out of said bat and the still the angry neighbor yeah. next door yelling at them it's um it was a really we nice setup see that we get to see that john's kind of a prick to his girlfriend slash childhood friend um yeah, that was that's interesting. The whole overprotective boyfriend thing. Well, it was nice that they built that relationship in the movie because they're not yeah. boyfriend girlfriend until the end. They're just yeah, you know that group that five that click were friends. Technically, it was four. Kate comes in older, but the four of them were really good friends when they were younger. And then John and that character create, you know, you could tell there's that tension, that sexual tension. They they want to be together. But it's weird because they're friends and it's like a big brother little sister relationship yeah. for a lot of it and yeah. that's just kind of awkward and then finally um, they just kinda, take the plunge <laughs> i kind of felt like it was a bit shoehorned in there a but lot yeah. of this film is shoehorned we're not gonna i'm not gonna go down that yeah road. yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. it's like here is the trope we're putting this in here for reasons the one what the, reasons? I don't know. The one big, like, weird part of this film to me is Christ. The character, like, Christ, most of the yeah. story arc revolving around Christ. When he's not in that weird, dramatic, overly dramatic, forced conflict scenes, 
I think he's great. I love yeah. that character. I think Christ is hilarious. But the minute that he like I, gets all moody and yells at his girlfriend and the 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 cereal, yeah. I'm just like, what? He's the supposed hell, to be man? the happy go lucky guy, and and his girlfriend's like the only likable character in this entire fucking movie. But she just dies of. Dude, I want to buy one of those necklaces. I want to buy one of those necklaces. She should make me a fucking one. When she tells him to get over his his fucking self, I'm like, hell yeah. Finally. Better get over your fucking self. Right? Because I was like, okay. As soon as, uh, as soon as, like, he starts being a little bitch, that's when the film kind of goes sour for me. Because I was enjoying it up until that point. I messaged and you and I specifically like asked, I want to know when you, right, when you were going to feel like it became less fun. And I think we yeah. had pretty much the same area, I think. Yeah, no, I felt like, okay, I liked Hal, but I felt like he was a little bit too much. Uh, who's the guy that's in Independence Day who flies up into the rectum of the spaceship? Uh, that guy. Uh, Isn't that also the dad from Casper? No, I, well, it might be uh, <laughs> the guy who he, his his brother's a very attractive, famous, well well placed actor, and he's just a character actor who's now living in Canada due to tax evasion. Yeah, hold um, on, I we we we're on the same page. It's this. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. the same guy. Um, it could be. I don't know. So it's Doctor Hyde's Bill Pullman. It's not Bill Pullman. No, not Bill Pullman. It's, he's he's it's the one from Independence Bill Day. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman's oh, no, attractive. He's the president. No, he's not the one that flies the ship into the rectum of the spaceship. I. What? Who is it? Ah, uh, famous. Anyhow, that doesn't matter <laughs> at all. I'm sure someone listening to the podcast will write in a comment section for you, and you can you can get it from there, or we can look it up later. Sure. What really matters is that this movie is okay. But <laughs> so let's be clear. But Clark, as as Clark they, picked this movie, yeah. right? Clark picked this movie. Yeah. It isn't this movie. It's not like we're judging this movie, whether it's good or bad or whatever. We, we like picking a lot of movies yeah. that we just haven't seen and uh, that look fun. And I'm going to tell you right now, this movie has a lot of moments that are fun. You can find a lot of fun yeah. things about this movie. But I also think yeah. it is what it is Doug at the Doug end of the day. Said it is what it is yeah there there are some really good gags in this film like doug duggerson is this this newscaster and there's like a scene where he's arguing with the other newscaster and he's like don't bring my mother in this a lot of men breastfeed until they're 18 yeah and i'm just like i'm just like what the fuck and then zombies attack and he gets up and he's in his underpants and he starts screaming it's it's good it's great some of these things well he's are, a news are anchor pretty good like just to, just to make it clear yeah. he's a news anchor so you only ever see him from you know yeah. the midsection up yeah. so underneath he's just in his boxer shorts and he's got i think dress socks on and dress yeah, shoes yeah, yeah. but no pants for yeah. some reason um it, but it's he's like they take dick yeah this is basically a bit like freaked <laughs> yes. this is a cringier version of freaked in a way uh, but they <laughs> yeah. try to shoehorn in a bit more drama and <sighs> Which doesn't work. The zombies look kind of goofy. Kill me now with the drama like, part of this film. Like I didn't really care. Yeah, yeah, you could have gotten rid of it. Having Kate get bitten, like that, could have been the only drama piece you kept in there, and then like make make it so the weed is actually the cure for zombieism or something, because that would have been hilarious. I don't know. They definitely Just left the movie make it open. A little, for a sequel, right? For the attempt at trying yeah. to round out maybe some of those questions that are left unanswered. Like, well, how do we get past the zombie apocalypse? Because I think the funniest part is, if you look at the scenes throughout this movie, these dudes who put this together, right? Their whole, like, the goal was to make a movie that was a stoner zombie apocalypse film that they would want to be in or watch or, or be a part of. And I think they nailed it. Yeah. From that perspective, they did exactly what they were trying to do. They took lots of parts of different zombie films that they really enjoyed, and they made it really funny. Even the even the scene where Kate does get bit, they have to chop her arm off. And then uh, the blonde girl who, God forbid, I can't remember her actual character name, but I think uh, she was Christ's girlfriend, right? She goes and has that yeah, shower yeah. moment, and it's 
if if you listen to the music, it reminds me of so many other dramatic scenes in zombie films where the characters are just completely breaking down and having that moment of like, what the hell is going on? How are we going to survive this? She's just in the shower crying, washing the blood off of herself. And I'm like, this is this is good. This is good drama. They nailed this scene. <laughs> but then the other stuff with Christ yelling at the girlfriend and him always leaving and causing drama and like all that was just a little excessive. Well, it was just a bit much. The tone of the film was a bit all over the place, which is the issue. You can't yeah. it, it was it's like a bipolar girlfriend or boyfriend, however you want to picture that, or Apache helicopter friend. Uh it's it's just a awkward situation where you have the hot the cold the laughter and everything all at once and you're not supposed to feel those at the same time and it just leaves you confused at the end i i can't agree more i definitely agree 100 <laughs> percent. it's boring at points it's like it's like there's too much going on at points it's um I feel like th this could have been put on the chopping block and had a lot cut out and a lot of editing in the script and just really understanding, hey, what are we trying to go with? Even if it's a fun stoner flick, like th th that's that's good too, man. Like I understand that, but most stoner flicks don't do everything all at once. No, I mean this is, you know, we don't. I don't want to just sit here and beat a dead horse about the areas yeah. where it could improve. I think. Um, like you, you know, like you mentioned beforehand, breaking breaking down the characters, talking about different characters that we liked and whatnot, um, yeah, I think yeah. would be a little bit easier to do. I think one of the high points in this film for me, especially, was the music that was used a lot of times. Uh, there's a yeah. really fun song while the crew's getting high, and they're talking about what could have caused the zombie ap apocalypse. You know, is it an infection? Is it a virus? Is it a bite? Is it a you know whatever? They're going through all the different. Uh, types of zombies that we've seen in film um there's a really fun song i couldn't find what it's called i don't i don't know if anyone knows what it is i'm gonna probably look some more after the episode um but it was so much fun like i want to i want to listen to that song again because it was just it was it was uh something i could enjoy but i mean for for the film as a whole i mean will i watch this again probably not i watched it twice in two days so that's probably more than enough for me for now um you know, there's, they've got to a lot of, like, film festivals, which I think is amazing. Um, you know, the film was done back in 2017. They went to 11 different film festivals in total from the beginning of 2017 to the end of 2018. It's finally made its way to Amazon Prime, which is how we watched it. Um, not sponsored, but always check Amazon Prime. Uh, and, and they won some awards, you know, best director, best supporting actress, uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's really good to see that an indie film can get some love. And that's, that's exactly where they, they kind of got their love was at film festivals and whatnot. And I think it could be something cool, something cool moving on in the future. Fun. Who is, uh, uh, do you want to break, break down any down characters? Then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about, let's talk about the six friends. We'll talk about the childhood friends first. I think we should start with uh, the one we did start with already, which is Christ. Whenever they, somebody says, Jesus Christ, and he says, don't talk, Not my don't, name. See, don't use my name like that. Not my name. Yeah. Just call me Christ. Yeah. yeah, that's a constant joke that I think could have been killed early yeah. on, or earlier on. But it, it also helps, I think, yeah. spread that uh, the dramatic moment between him and, and his girlfriend at the time because – She's just trying to come and check on him. And then um, she's like, Jesus. And he's like, I told you not to call me that. And she goes, I was just saying a phrase. <laughs> and then that's when you could tell. I she I think she knocked out of the park. But for Christ, he's definitely your comedic relief. Like, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed him. Up um, until that point. Yeah. Up until Where that he decides point. to. And then he invites the zombies in to murder all his friends for one last fight to go to Valhalla, and then he changes his mind as soon as uh, Hal gets a nip. So, I, I love how Hal just punches him right in the face, knocks him out to oh, knock yeah. some sense into him. It's great. 
Uh, let's see. So Hal, that's a great segue. We could talk about Hal next. Talk about Hal. Yeah, Hal. He's had that jacket. How's the? Uh, <laughs> Hal's got the weird eyes. He's got the uh, the weird darting back and forth eyes that kind of go all over the place. He just looks like he's always. He kind of talks. I can't. He kind of talks like this. He stops, and then he goes again, and he just kind of. He's the one that's super excited about killing all the zombies. Like he's got a mm-hmm. huge heart on for the undead. Well, he's been planning Kate it is since they said what third yeah. grade. Yeah, he's been planning for it, uh, but like Kate's kind of annoyed with them. But there's there's secretly a thing between the two of them. You want to know something um, funny about that? Both of them. What? So Kate and Hal. Right, Kate is played by yeah. Tiffany Arnold, and Hal yes. is played by Daniel Kylie. Tiffany Arnold, Keely. yeah, yeah, has recently changed her name to Tiffany Kylie. I think those no. two actually got married IRL, uh, and now are together. And I was trying to find some info on that on the internet as well, but they're not like a list celebs, so it's really hard to dig and find that information. Um, but if any I mean, listeners are, are wanting to validate that, uh, let us know. Cause I think that's pretty cool. These two obviously had some on screen chemistry. They did have a relationship in the film. And then if they ended up going on after the film was made to then get married, that's even cooler. That's really nice to hear. I mean, just another reason why indie films and, and film in general could be fun. Like there's little things like that, that can happen while on the set. Um, Isn't but yes, the thing, thing that thing that cute that cute it's a meat cute but uh so christ hal uh tara uh, is the third member of this group she's the the little girl that you see hanging out with them when they're kids and she's kind of always yep. like the friend who you ignore because she's a girl and you're a group of guys so like when they're in there she's the girl yeah when they're nerding about zombies and stuff to... she's just like can we just go outside and play? And they're like, what? No. Like, are you kidding me? No. <laughs> no, she, uh, she's got a crush on one of the guys in the group and she's always hanging out with them. And it always looks like they're dating. Now everybody jokes about them dating, but God forbid they actually date because, you know, TV shows, um, <laughs> they, they wind up dating at the end. Like we talked about that earlier, but she's kind of just there. She's kind of just there. If she wasn't in the, if she and John's characters were completely cut out, this movie would have been better. <laughs> yeah, I mean it could have. I think Dan Nye's one of the better actors out of the guys in the group. Um, yeah. So to lose him in the film as a whole would kind of suck, but the character John. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Could have, I mean, that story arc wasn't really needed. Nothing pivotal happened, right? He didn't come up with the idea of how to get out of the house or uh, anything like that. He's just pretty much a sidekick. He's he's uh, him and Tara both are just sidekicks throughout most of the film. He's in quite a few. Uh, he's getting quite a quite a bit of work too, so he's definitely probably one, him and Tiffany Keeley are probably the two that I would say are the two most prolific actors that I saw in this film. Mm-hmm. But you know. Oh, and the guy who played Coach Jeffers. That was kind of creepy, though. Yeah, the voice... The way they did the ADR for him was kind of weird because it definitely didn't fit, like, the look or feel of his character. He made his voice all grumpy and sound like that. And it was like, what yeah. What the hell's going on? Just use your regular voice, man. It would have been fine. <laughs> we didn't need any extra craziness. I don't um, know, the whole pedophilia shit nope, and all I'm that not, stuff yep, that I'm they kind of added it. in. Nope, I'm not, not going to, yeah, they made, they, they went there. They went there. It they made him the pedophile. Funny. Yep. It was, it made me uncomfortable. Especially made me because, uncomfortable. Especially because those twins, I mean, the twins don't look. They looked like they were 16. Yeah, they don't, they don't necessarily 18. look like they fit in high school. But I mean, they, they definitely said they were in high school. They definitely could be high schoolers, and and that's they, that's they, they too said far. something that made them high schoolers, and they're like, sure. yeah, he's yeah. a creeper. Anytime someone tells you they're that age, they're definitely not that age, though. Um, I'm sixteen. No, you're not. But the fact that they're I'm, hanging around I'm the video 12. store that makes it 
interesting. Yeah. Well, everybody's smoking weed all the time in this film. A lot of weed is smoked. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's always high. We get to watch them watch TV, uh, the Spanish uh, shopping network. As we're kind of moving away from the conversation, like moving away from Tara, but like Dan's kind of just there too. He plays the guitar and he had the childhood thing with Tara, right? And then from there, it's the girlfriend of. Uh, of Christ? Of Christ, who is probably the most likable character and the only one whose name I don't know. I think it was Misty. I'm not sure. I want to um, guess that it's Misty, but yeah, I can't I can't remember her name right now off the top of my head. Well, whatever it was, she was adorable. She did a great job. Uh, she's probably the only character I liked. And then when when she got yelled at and was told that she was stupid and she just like reacted in such a way, I was like, yes. Do you remember? Or yes, get over. Do you want to know who she What's reminds that? me of? Who she reminds you of? Sherry Moon, like a young Sherry Moon. You think so? I think she could play a young Firefly. Yeah, I think she could totally do that role if they ever wanted to do a prequel. She's got that cute uh -huh. blonde curly hair, just like Sherry Moon. And her delivery, yeah. I thought she was going to be a crazy person at some point and flip the script on everybody and be, you know, the reason why the zombies break in or something. And and I was completely Just wrong. Just a happy-go-lucky hippie character. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I think she, I think she reminds me a lot of um, Sherry Moon. Sherry Moon's great, dude. Absolutely huge fan of Rob Zombie and Sherry Moon. I think yeah. she's my favorite actress. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't my say favorite that, actress. I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I, I definitely enjoy right, her I think work. We, we cover it all without all the friends, but like without any other story, favorite? we've done everything we can do so yeah. far. So uh I'm sure I mean, you're gonna ask me zombies show up. I mean zombies show up, they they come in and they, they start killing people and the townspeople like at first you know i thought that this was going to be a movie about like the townspeople kind of gathering up and just controlling the zombies because there's a car wash going on with somebody like playing with a zombie like a pet well and it's it's like, uh, the sign on the the sign on the zombie yeah it's uh zombie awareness car wash they're holding this car wash to make people aware that there are zombies yeah I'm just so curious about how all that went out. And then as soon as they see all this stuff, they're like, okay, we're done. We're going to go hide. Um, let's go back in the house because I thought we were going to be able to kill all the zombies. But apparently the zombies are still winning despite everybody knowing about them. People are still, like, turning into them. Well, yeah, they're fast zombies. They're not slow zombies. Yeah. Going on with my camera. I don't know. It just went crazy. Hi, welcome back. That's weird. <laughs> hey, it's great being here. Um, uh, no, I I think it's yeah. No, think, it was it was. A, what's your favorite part though? So favorite part of the movie, uh, as a whole, is probably uh, when that fun that really fun song plays when they're all kind of talking about and gearing up and and preparing and getting ready for the to go out and actually fight the zombies um it's before and then they, they go all outside. go to bed well it's before they go to bed and then wake up and then go outside yeah. this is this is their fatal flaw right if they wanted to get out there and start killing zombies they needed to do it that night instead they got high they got really high and talked about a bunch of shit but they never actually went and did anything that's your number one problem right with stoners in films is like yeah they just get high and they just sit around they don't do anything that's exactly what happened and then they go outside and everybody else is already you know the lynch mob has already been formed in the neighborhood uh the the high school the other high school kids in the neighborhood the jocks are having a car wash uh typical jocks in high school right car wash for everything um so i thought that was funny uh, and the stoners I just arrived so much. too late <laughs> well I mean, shit. I wonder if they got any Yoohoo, they Clark. Too long. You got any Yoohoo? I could go for a Yoohoo right now. <laughs> um, no, yeah, yeah. My, like that's that. my favorite it's, scene. What do you, that what's your is favorite? when the movie went 
I guess that could be when the movie went, eh, we're not going to, this is as good as it gets, guys. Yep. I was running off of that high for a while. <sighs> Anyhow, my favorite scene of the movie. Um, when it was over. No. <laughs> hey, you. No, this is I, great, I, I, you I don't. I don't know. It, so. I like Doug. <laughs> Doug Duggerson. Doug Duggerson. Whenever Doug Duggerson came on, big smile come came on my face. Uh, his quote about being breastfeeding until he was 18 put a smile on my face, and I stood with him in solidarity. Um, I'm joking, but you know, Doug. Otherwise, man, I don't really have anything else to say about this film other than it was, it was a movie, and you know, I I, I actually would wouldn't mind watching it again, like having it on the background, not like actually watching it. I think sure. it'd be fine, like because it's it's one of those things where like this is a work of art, this is what people made, and I guess maybe there's more I can learn about it, and it's quirky cast who of people who, not many people know a lot about. Yeah, I wouldn't touch this movie for a while only because I just watched it twice in two days, which is a yeah. bit a bit much for this style of film. But if you, I was having uh, a party, you yourself out. I did. I definitely did. I think if if I was having a party, maybe, and you know, someone said, yeah, "Hey, man. you want to watch a dumb zombie movie, or you know, a silly zombie movie, or a funny zombie movie?" Like this would come to mind now. At least I oh, have man. that in my bag of tricks. We would, we would do Return of the Living Dead. There's no way. See, I haven't seen that one officially yet to say whether or not I'd pick that uh, as a comedy, you know, as an official comedy. But um, I can't wait till we get to that one because it'll be, I think, so many people talk so highly of it that it, it better be good. Otherwise, I'm going to be really pissed. Everyone says Return oh, of the Living Dead 3 is the best one. That's what I keep hearing. Which one? Uh, Return of the Living Dead 3. Okay. I don't know who says that's the best one because I'm going to have to tell you it's definitely not the best one. And when you see it, you will be like, yeah, maybe we'll watch that one first so we can just taper your expectations on the there first one. I like it. The, I'm going to have to tell you, man, it's, it's not. It's really weird. It's really weird. Uh, you never expect a zombie movie to go in that direction. So 1980s. I love watching uh, franchises that people love out of order um, because yeah. a lot of times if you love a franchise, like I love Phantasm, so I'm going to tell people, watch that shit in order, right? But if someone went and watched Ravager first, which is the final film, they may never, ever, 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 ever want to touch another Phantasm film <laughs> because watching that one first really ruins, it ruins a lot of the idea behind everything and it just takes it so much further in a specific direction so like if return of the living dead 3 does something similar like that you know it could really ru uh, ruin the return on investment for the other ones but i have a feeling the tone is completely yeah. different from the first and third movie yeah the the first one is completely fun the third one is a bit more serious like Imagine them taking Night of the Living or Bong of the Living Dead and splitting it into like a funny mun and then the drama one. And it's only the drama piece? Uh, I would say it's a bit more dramatic. Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's as fun. It's so a bit more edgy and drama y. I think when we get there it'll be it'll be interesting to see what uh what comes out of that that watch that watch fest. I'm excited. And I know Let's you're do excited. It. Um, so Oh yeah, I'm ready, ready for, for that. Uh, by the time everybody uh, in the audience will hear, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, the the Halloween stream, live stream was pretty good, wasn't it, guys? Wasn't that great? Wasn't I it mean, amazing?" I hope, I hope thanks they for had watching. A lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, thanks for checking that out. Anyhow, I know we're kind of getting off topic here with this movie, but you know, whatever. There's uh, not a lot. There's Curtis, not a lot to this movie to talk about. So, I don't. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I, I'd say we're we're actively trying to not talk about it i have one thing me. i have one thing about the movie to ask <laughs> you or one one last thing to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to check on all right so this movie was made in 2017 um probably right. built 
over maybe 2015, 2016. I don't know how long the Indiegogo ran for. But there's a lot of interesting right. um, similarities to what's happening in this film to what we're going through yeah. in real life right now. With COVID-19, I thought of that. Uh -huh. I almost sent that to you. And Councilman Pat Swanson and how he's like, during this epidemic, I'm going to be your political man. And he's like totally like pushing an agenda. And the guys sitting on the couch getting baked, they're just like, man, even during a pandemic, we can't get away from politicians. <laughs> It's yeah, like everybody yeah. everything in this movie felt like COVID-19 right? we're losing because against the zombies cuz we're idiots. It's crazy. Anyways, I just yeah. wanted to bring that similarity up cuz I couldn't I couldn't get past it when I was watching it. I was like, "Holy cow, man. That's nuts." No, you're completely right. All right. That's my last thing on Bong the Living Dead. Thanks for picking this, Clark. Well, I really I really appreciate you. I I think it's something we needed to experience to really grow as a couple uh anyhow let's talk about what you've been up to lately uh yeah so in the last week i've watched uh two episodes of lovecraft country and i can't uh, speak highly enough of it i think it's a lot of fun i think there's a lot of um you know once again uh, everything created out of art or out of uh you know I, I can't think of the right word right now but the social commentary inside of that show uh, is also a lot of fun, but it's also horror related, which is really cool to see. Um, you and I did a couple of movies a while back, I think beginning of the season, maybe middle of the season, where we talked a lot about H.P. Lovecraft and getting to see some more ideas kind of come to light in a in a fun, entertaining way is cool. So I'm I'm excited to finish it out. It's not a whole lot of episodes, but they're an hour a piece, so it's kind of a, a long watch um, to sit and get through, but. So far, so good. So damn good. What have you been up to? Man, Lovecraft Country. I've only seen like some of the first episode, but it looks pretty good, man. The vampire is showing up. Uh, I've been getting into lots of messes. Uh, making a lot of them, too. But one of my favorite messes that I've been able to make is with this show called Evil. It's like, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but it's a pretty messy show in terms of they decided to grab uh, the exorcism and Silence of the Lambs and then just smush them together. So the main character is basically Clarice and the main villain for like the first couple episodes is essentially uh, Hannibal Lecter, but he's possessed by Satan or a demon okay so and she's catholic so it's got the catholic religious undertones or if you say our father's prayer stuff like that and it's been kind of it's a slow burn it's a slow burn it's like it's kind of messy it's kind of you know you seen, if you like violence you the lambs and possession i have yes okay so that's what it's it's feeling a lot like exorcist three mixed with silence of the lambs uh, even more specific i would Sounds good. i would say i would say the exorcism exorcism more than poltergeist yeah um okay. but yeah it, it sounds it sounds really good it sounds super good i'm gonna have to put it on my list no you might like it, it might be up your alley otherwise i have nothing so i think i want to plug our social media which is the number two guys horror pod on both Instagram and Twitter. Curtis does lots of fun live streams every, uh, I think most days right now we're doing, well, he did 30 days of Halloween, 31 days of Halloween, mm -hmm. which he really enjoyed. And, uh, I don't know what, what we have going on here in November, Curtis, do you have anything you kind of bring out with that? Uh, no, nothing specific. We don't, I At usually, moment, we oh. usually do polls every Monday on Twitter to pick what we're going to watch Fridays. Uh, at lunchtime, I took a break for a little while after um, my wife's grandfather passed just because life got a little busy, so I wasn't able to do them every Friday. But um, this past November, we started back up. So every Monday, there's a new poll. Uh, you can pick between one of four movies. I just pick movies at random, usually. Uh, whatever wins, that's what we watch on Fridays. We hang out together at noon, uh, Mountain Standard Time. Uh, and yeah, so 
keep an eye out every Monday for those polls. Check it out. Check it out. And also feel free to email us at our email address, which is the word to TWO. Two guys and some horror at gmail.com. That is two guys and some horror at gmail.com. If you have any thing you'd like us to watch, we, we've been getting a couple film requests here and there, which is pretty cool. It's nice to see our, our listener base kind of grow as we make more friends and meet more people in the community. So thank you everyone for all the support you give us. And we really appreciate you. Yes. Be on the lookout. Shockers coming up soon. Sasquatch. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.